Good morning, everyone. Thank you one more time to be join our webinar series. My name is Davi, and today I'm gonna bring some a little bit a, a little bit more about our knowledge on trace minerals. The idea is to talk a little bit about the oxides in livestock production, some of the risks, and also current alternatives for their complete replacement. I bring to you Chantal some of the first slides here. Perfect. Thank you, Davi. Uh, welcome everyone to this webinar. Uh, right before you start, um, my name is Chantal Valin. I'm going to be your host for today. And I'm just going to, to raise a few questions. Uh, or, uh, or two points that I want to mention. Um, we are more than happy for you to raise questions. Uh, you can do that via the uh, questions panel that you see in your GoToWebinar uh, tool set. So please do that uh, during the webinar, uh, but we also have some time uh, after Davi is uh, ready uh, with his presentation. Uh, but feel free to, uh, to raise them and we will address them uh, accordingly. Um, we have a webinar recordings available upon request after the webinar and the same goes for hands out. So you can, uh, you can request them and we will send them uh, to you. And just a small disclaimer before Davi starts is please note that all product names and claims mentioned in this webinar are very generic and that they can differ from your local situation and your local uh, legal uh, situation. So please contact your, your local CELCO or trial representative to discuss the needs and opportunities that you have looking at uh, this webinar, uh, etc. Um, so with no further ado, I'm going to give the floor to Davi. Enjoy this webinar. Thanks, Chantal. Uh, thank you, everyone. So let's let's uh, have a start right here on the webinar. Before we go further, uh, for those who doesn't know me, my name is David Brito. I I was born and raised in Brazil. Uh, I'm a DVM with a research background uh, done in the U.S. in the University of California in Davis and also University of Florida. It's been about uh, 12 years of experience in the animal feed industry. I've been working in several other Companies. It's been about one year. I joined Trial Nutrition as part of the Global Feed Additives team. So my role today is a, I work as a program manager for the Europe, uh, Africa, and also Mid East, uh, most related to the trace mineral uh, portfolio that uh, Trial Nutrition have to offer. So today, let's talk a little bit about oxides and some of the risks and also alternatives. Uh, our agenda gonna be summarized as a we're gonna talk a little bit, bring some tra trace mineral uh, history timeline, then some background information, zinc oxide, and also manufacturing process. A little bit about the absorption and bioavailability. Then you go to some uh, real, uh, bioavailability results in livestock, in, uh, including also ruminants and broilers. Also some uh, stability results that you has been performing in our internal lab. And then I bring a little bit about alternatives, the IntelliBond and some performance results in compared to oxides and some implications in conclusion. I hope all you enjoy. And also any question can, as much as Chantal has mentioned can be done along the presentation. But that, of course, by the end of this presentation, I'll be glad to be answering any other that has showed up. So before you go further, and I believe that's an important point to bring, uh, when comes to zinc oxide, in the livestock production, we have two major applications. One application, what I'm going to call nutritional levels application, which works for zinc oxide, but also for other oxide uh, trace minerals, such as manganese, which they are major applications as supplemental primary source of trace mineral to livestock. So uh, in this type of application, we are just want to provide the level of trace mineral or the trace metal you want. So in the case of the zinc oxide, it's about bioavailability and absorption of zinc. Generally, in this situation, uh, we use regular lower levels according to species, and that can range, of course, country by country, and species by species, and animal category by animal category. But generally, we're going to see these levels, like in the case of the zinc oxide, ranging from 20 to 150 ppm. Of course, you have another application for zinc oxide, and this is, is a, where they're going to sell pharmacological level application. Uh, when zinc oxide plays alternative treatment for controlling diarrhea related problems in, in just winning piglets. And in this case, the zinc oxide is applied in a higher level, which range from 2,500 
300 or 3000 ppms and the focus of this application is gut health what we're going to discuss here is the nutritional level application we are not going to talk about the pharmacological we are not you just want to uh, improve the awareness when you decide to use zinc oxide as our major source of zinc and what are the risks and what we have learned uh, during these last 20 years when it comes to zinc oxide because there is different source of trace mineral zinc oxide is still available and perhaps uh, even when price is very uh, is can be very aggressive when it comes to zinc oxide we understand some risk can apply so that's the reason and that's what going to be about this presentation today so just to try a, a trace mineral source timeline zinc, so uh, with the all the modern genetics uh, we we found out uh, research but also the industry uh, find out that the amount of minerals or trace mineral that is included in the basal diets were not uh, enough to keep all this response that the modern genetics brings for livestock. So in the beginning of this uh, 19th, uh, the 20th century, in the 1900s, we start to work as oxide as a, a major supplemental source. And oxide has been the primary source until the 1940s because uh, after the Second War, a lot of improvement in the production of the sulfates came. Also with the research database, we learn a lot that sulfates, even that's more reactive and more soluble, also, there is, is uh, can offer a higher bioavailability and improve the results when compared to oxide. And then, when sulfate starts to take place, of course, during the 70s, alternative sources to replace the sulfates in, in special organic trace minerals came uh, shows up in the market. And always, the uh, the reason is to really improve the bioavailability also improve the uh, the problem related to reactivity and also improve the homogeneity when then compared to even sulfates or oxides and just about the end of the 90s then uh, the new technology of trace minerals called hydroxy trace minerals in the case is our integrity bond that shows up in these new technologies also uh, comes to improve the essential nutrient stability in feeds and optimize optimal production regarding additional trace mineral absorption. So in this case, that's a timeline where the technology starts to improve to always offer a better alternative to livestock, to the, to the animal, and also to the industry. And uh, I just want to make sure when you see this timeline, we can talk about oxides. We are talking really about a technology that's been placed about for the last 120 years. And a lot has been done in the industry to improve the quality of the trace mineral source. A uh, little background information on zinc oxide. So zinc oxide is an organic compound. Uh, is a white powder that's insoluble in water and is being widely used as an additive for innumerous um, uh, materials and products that include uh, rubbers, plastics, ceramics, glass, lubricants, payments, pigments, batteries. And one of the applications of the zinc oxide is the animal feed. And that's an important point because when it comes to zinc oxide, the animal feed is not the primary industry. And of course, uh, when it comes to the zinc oxide production, even that's going to be feed or food grade, is not the primary industry. So generally, distributors and suppliers are going to cherry pick the highest quality standard of zinc oxide to provide to this industry, but you cannot control the process. And the process being like a former old process that's been used, which can bring not the best alternative in terms of relative bioavailability, uh, amount of heavy metals, and other. Uh, uh, impurities in the product that can really affect the result and in special the performance of the animals that when they come to be supplement zinc oxide as a major source of zinc. Of course, you can find this insight uh, in nature, but uh, most, let's say, basically close to 100% of the zinc oxide is being produced synthetically. Uh, just to have idea, uh, we can say that about 50%. Uh, so in our daily basis, zinc oxide is commonly found in, in medical ointments, where, where you can see like a, for babies rash diaper treatments or sunscreen, and then uh, it's being very used for skin irritations. And that's the reason you want to uh, use the, the zinc oxide because they are not soluble in water and they can be a very important part for this type of treatments. But uh, over 50% uh, over of the zinc oxide use, uh, produced in the world goes to the rubber industry. And it's been very important, not just to produce tire, but also shoe soles and even hockey pucks. 
but uh, in the second main use is also concrete manufacturing and that comes along to be close to 80 percent of the total production and the addition of the zinc oxide for the concrete process also improved the water resistance so most of the use application of the zinc oxide go to this water uh, resistance attribute that the zinc oxide can bring and as you can see feedstuff does not represent even 10 percent of uh, all the application or the share of the volume being produced in the world related to the zinc oxide so we are talking about an important industry but represented just one piece of how zinc oxide is being applied in the world so and because of this that comes to us to understand a little bit about the manufacturing process of zinc oxide which also can affect it very directly the the absorption the bioavailability of the zinc and especially the performance result when that comes to livestock animals uh, in terms of zinc oxide uh, we can say there is two major global process for manufacturing zinc oxide one is called the direct process and the second is called the indirect process the direct process is also very well known as the american process and uh, this is being the most uh, the major process for the most of the zinc oxide that we use in the feed animal industry because they are cheaper way to produce and also this process allowed to use a big variety or different types of raw materials that contain some zinc inside in generally the zinc ores or even smelter by products are reduced and the metal vapors are oxidized by air combustion to produce zinc oxide so this type of zinc oxide of uh, turns to be very to be very lower in purity due to the source of the raw material use. So the final product is also very lower in quality when you compare to direct process uh, to the indirect one. And talk about the indirect process, the, uh, also known as the French process. Differently than the direct process, the French one, the starting, uh, the starting raw material uh, is pure zinc metal. So we talk about a different type source, uh, very, very uh, uh, high pure type of um, raw material. So and during this process, the zinc metal is also vaporized by boiling, and then the process is carried out in a directly heat reaction vessels, kind of a horizontal retorts, and, and or in a vertical refining column with a very effective re re rectification. Afterwards, the zinc vapor is also oxidized or burned to produce the zinc oxide. So this is a different type of raw materials, different type of process bring come to a, a different type or different quality of end product. Depending on the type of zinc oxide we're looking for, we can understand right now different process can bring to a different products. So, and there's of course, uh, others, let's say process and, and uh, process variation about that. You wanna very well know and also the most used process for uh, zinc oxide in feedstuff is what we call the Vowes process. And in this process, the treated zinc containing material and generates that those are metallurgical waste. So if the, any metallurgical waste that contains zinc, doesn't matter the concentration, can be applied to this type of process. But of course, metallurgical waste also has other type of metals, which can be heavy metal, completely dangerous for animal production, but also other contaminants that can really uh, affect the quality of the end product. So uh, generally, Bowers process can bring to a zinc oxide final product lower concentration of zinc when you compare it to the uh, indirect or French process. So in this case, the metallurgical waste go to a very high temperature above uh, uh, 1200 degrees in a rotary plane, which, which can bring up to oxidization and also the production of the, the zinc oxide. But as I mentioned, generally contain high levels of impurity because of course the type of raw material process we're talking about. Um, well, so, to, and then to make a important point about the process. So as I could mention, you can, you, uh, it's, I wanna make sure that everybody can bring that, uh, this message back home, which is some process can use very dirty raw materials as metallurgical waste or even construction waste, like you can see here, which contain little bit of uh, zinc and of course other metals. And some process can use very high quality metal zinc up to 95%. So which can bring for a different type of zinc oxide. When that comes to use, there is a line between when you use the very poor raw material 
and cheaper process to produce income side from that to go to a more expensive process when you use higher uh, raw material. So in this case, as you can see here, Bauer's process is very close to what you call a lower purity raw material, which is going to offer a zinc oxide with much less relative bioavailability and also much more contaminants when you compare to other processes such as indirect or French process, which can provide you a higher purity raw material, more relative bioavailability and also less contaminants. It's important to mention that uh, Bauer's process also can bring a very large variation of color, texture, and granulometry, and also a, a very large variation of heavy, of heavy metals. So it's very hard to predict the relative bioavailability or the absorption of zinc when it comes to this raw material. And that's the reason the results when it comes to zinc oxide can vary a lot. So we understand they are less reactive than sulfates, or in the case of the zinc sulfate, but zinc oxide is really and we cannot predict that much when it comes to the process and the type of source that we are working with. And this can be a very big risk in terms when you are applying nutrition or looking for performance in livestock. Uh, I just want to make a comment that generally when you go to more pure uh, or higher standard process to produce zinc oxide, this type of product doesn't come too much for food industry or even for the feed industry, but go much more for pharmaceutical or analytical grade industry. So, because in that, of course, the zinc oxide producing in those ways are much more expensive when they compare to the lower end or the lower purity raw material or methodology. So uh, uh, now we're going to move a little bit further for the importance of the trace minerals. But considering all that in terms of uh, how the production methods or the or the variation in the production method can affect the bioavailability and the quality of the of the end product. So we must remember every time that trace meter in the case is metal are essential. So when you want to provide some zinc source, in this case, the zinc oxide, what you want at the end of the day is to have zinc available to be absorbed by the animals. And we know that for uh, for many applications. And that's the reason when take, we must make a decision and the decision must be made how going to be our predictability or how going to be the quality of our offer in terms to provide all these trace minerals. But uh, you must remember that uh, trace minerals only have a nutritional value to the animal when they are absorbed across the intestinal in the animal's bloodstream. And also the trace mineral has been absorbed, only the animal can really direct where and how the trace metal will be utilized and used within its physiology. The trace mineral products simply provide a form to facilitate the handling of the trace metal in feed. So decision must be made. If you go, if the decision comes to the zinc oxide, there is all these uh, problems or risks related to the process that you not control, the concentration of the zinc that per, uh, perhaps you do not know. So at the end of the day, you're gonna provide some uh, source of uh, metal zinc, which you cannot really predict how much zinc will be available to the animal to absorption. And of course, other problems can be bringing in terms to have some contaminants, including heavy metals as well. So this is the where the risk is going to play around. And that then where you go for to discuss a little bit about how the research has shown those results as well. So uh, as I mentioned, so metals are essential. And when it comes to animal nutrition, of course, you try to keep the optimum balance for performance, avoid it to be suboptimal or subclinical toxicity. And for this reason, to improve the probability to have this optimal balance, we provide a basal ratio plus the trace mineral source or a premix source or a blend of mineral source. So in this case, of course, when it comes to a higher a bioavailable or higher quality minerals, such as a hydrox trace mineral in telebond or other organic trace mineral, we can really improve this probability to be provided those metals. And that's where we're that's this what we're looking for when formulating or working for the nutrition for uh, livestock animals. Improve the probability to make sure those animals are going to receive that amount of uh, uh, trace mineral. In the case of the zinc oxide, we can understand easily that can be the, this probability is going to be very reduced because you really cannot predict the amount of zinc that's going to be available for the animal when compared to the other source. But you already know that for a long time, I just want to present here a table uh, regarding the coefficient of absorption for the most common trace mineral available source. This is a, a table from the NRC dairy cattle 2001. 
So, and you compare like copper, zinc, or manganese, among our inorganic sources available, oxide, oxides are recognized to have the lower efficiency of absorption. When you compare copper oxide to copper sulfate, you talk about like a 1% of coefficient absorption to five, like five times more sulfate, uh, five times more sulfate than the oxide. I'm, uh, I, I know nowadays is being not, uh, most of the industry is not being using copper oxide as a source of copper, and that's and the reason is that, beside all other problems related to quality, and I mean, but I uh, and I hope in the future they're going to be absent in the industry because we already understand that copper oxide cannot be don't provide any available copper to the animals. When it comes to the zinc, some difference between 12, 10 to 20 percent. So of course zinc oxide is more available uh, than the other metals, but uh, when you compare to the sulfate, so there's two times more zinc available for the zinc sulfate when compared to zinc oxide. The same things that play to the manganese when compare manganese oxide with the manganese sulfate, a hard, a very a big difference. So this information is already uh, being since 2000 available, in this case it's the dairy cattle, where you understand, okay, when you want to take a decision to use an organic source, you understand as well that our inorganic oxides have the low efficiency of absorption. Uh, and for this reason, even, uh, and, but, uh, and that comes to my point, even if you know the absorption is very low, why is you using that? And right here, just going to bring an exercise about of absorption coefficient that compares zinc sulfate with zinc oxide. And let and in this example I'm gonna use, let's pick like a, if you're gonna provide 100 milligram of a zinc sulfate. In other words, because of the concentration, only 36.3 milligrams of the zinc sulfate is really metal zinc. And considering the coefficient of absorption of 20%, uh, from this 36.3 only 7.27 milligrams of absorbed zinc uh, of zinc gonna be absorbed. So you understand that most of the zinc you're not gonna be absorbed, but one part will be, and according to the NRC table, we're gonna be talk about 20%. So this turns to be 7.27. When you compare to the zinc oxide, in this case, if you offer 100 milligrams, there's the concentration of zinc in zinc oxide is much higher than the sulfate that comes to 78 milligrams in 100. But about the zinc, only 10% will be absorbed, and that comes to 7.8 milligrams. So if you offer 100 milligrams of zinc oxide, only 7.8 milligrams are going to be absorbed zinc. And for this reason, I'm pretty sure when that comes to formulation in, nutrition, in the animal feed industry, we're just going to take a decision on price. Okay, if zinc oxide is cheaper, I'm going to use that because at the end of the day, they're going to offer about the same level of absorbed zinc. But uh, what I want to bring here is, is improve the awareness that other things are related to absorption than just these calculations. Here. And when it comes to performance as well. So we must understand that uh, even if the NRC estimate efficiency of absorption 10% for zinc, uh, actually this, uh, this number is really a moving target. And there's many factors influencing the bioavailability. We can talk about these different species, different availability. That's different to like uh, broilers, pigs, or a cattle gonna be different. Genetics, age, sex, physiological state. Or talk about animal in a growth situation, or like in a finishing diet, or a lactating animal, and also the nutritional status, also microflora, uh, interaction with other dietary components, competitive antagonism with of similar ions, also chelation effects. But one important thing is the mineral solubility, and that's what we're gonna discuss here. When they come, if you even if you consider the absorption uh, table absorption like 10% for zinc when it comes to the zinc oxide, there's so much things involved in the process, so much things involved with uh, the solubility of these products that cannot be under our controlling. So you really don't know how much of zinc you are really providing to those ends. And then when it comes to the research background, you see many differences in absorption and in, in bioavailability and also performance results, even when compared to sulfate, but in special when com on, on, they come to a more bioavailable or more safe uh, source of tracemiru, such as the intelligence. So let's bring some uh, relative bioavailability research information here. This is a, a very nice uh, research done by Edwards and Baker that was published in Journal of Animal Science back in 1999. So right here, they really check the bioavailability of zinc in several sources of zinc oxide, zinc sulfate, and zinc metal. 
So of course, uh, they use a zinc, a zinc sulfate as an analytical grade to create a standard response curve. And then they use check zinc, five, uh, five sorts of zinc oxide for feed grade, a one analytical grade, which is higher standard. And all those comes from different processes, as you can see, hydrosulfide, Vowes process, French process, and some of those are even unknown process, which is very common also in our type of industry. When you go to a supplier, they cannot even mention which is a process because as a dealer, they buy from different manufacturers. They can combine together. You cannot really control the process that the zinc oxide or the origination of the zinc oxide is coming from. And then they check some uh, three sorts of zinc sulfate, feed grade, and also food grade. And now, source of zinc metal to understand. Of course, zinc metal is not allowed to be uh, used in the animal industry, but can give us idea compared to these lower bioavailability source how the other zinc oxide and zinc sulfates are performing in terms of manufacturing process. Uh, this uh, in the in 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 this publication, this manuscript. manuscript they have uh, run uh, three assays. So I'm going to show here the first assay where they compare three grades of uh, zinc oxide to zinc sulfate analytical grade. So, and right here, they, of course, uh, create this standard cover for body weight in total tibia zinc. Uh, and, and they uh, use this information uh, to create a regression of the supplemental zinc intake. So when it comes to the uh, zinc oxide relative bioavailability. When we compare different sources, you're gonna have a very variation of result. If that comes for the first feed grade, food grade, feed grade source, the relative bioavailability to compare to sulfate is about 94% for body weight or not 91% for tibia zinc. But then when you go down to the other type of uh, the same zinc oxide but different manufacturing process, they go down to 32%, 22%. 47% or 44. Let's pick this example right here. If you're going to do a formulation to your animals or in your feed, what will be the relative probability spectrum right here? You cannot control that. Big variation because just a different, just because the process were different. So different process, different results in the zinc oxide relative probability in chicks. Uh, in a second assay, they did the same. Uh, uh, they now are uh, they create the same standard curve for body weight again, regress on supplemental zinc intake. And of course, besides the zinc oxide, they also check some zinc sulfate. And as a result, I want to show here the same situation variation. Of course, there is a process that the zinc sulfate uh, relative bioavailability was very high, close to 90%, very close to what's happened to the sulfate. But of course, you have others that are low, like 89 or even 41%. And just to give you an idea, when that comes to feed grade, even the sulfate, also there is a variation. They are lower than analytical grade because analytical grade, they are very higher in quality. But still, uh, the variation among the process done or the quality of the, sulfate, the, the zinc sulfate, even for food or for feed grade, is not that far away. And then, of course, when it comes up for the last analysis, right here which the zinc metal dust so regular metal dust zinc even the metal dust zinc which is not available or not support to be offered to animals or using animal diets the relative bioavailability compared to the analytical sulfate is much higher than the result you saw in some of the zinc oxide that you have analyzed here so in other words uh, there are zinc oxide available in the market depend of the process very very low in bioavailability to uh, to, to the animal. And in the last uh, assay, also, uh, again, a standard curve for body weight, again, regress no supplemental zinc intake was created, and they check again some zinc oxide uh, 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 zinc oxide samples, and also compared to the zinc metal form. And the same thing you could see here. Uh, of course, some zinc oxide were very high, depends on the type of process they were manufacturing, but others are very low, so the variation is very big, and some of the results are very close to what you see with the regular zinc metal film, as much as the dust is not something that's supposed to be offered to animal feed, and where the relative value is supposed to be very low, and it is low, lower than 40% when you compare both here in this study. So as a summary here, I just want to put this information according to the process, and as you can as you can understand of course some process for feed grade like this hydrosulfide process could offer you a very high 
and relative bar availability compared to sulfate. But generally, what you see is a big variation when it comes to the Bowers process or unknown process, which is a combination of process. So in this case, uh, we cannot really control the efficiency of absorption of the zinc when it comes to use zinc, or, uh, zinc oxide as the major source of supplemental zinc. And, uh, and this is a huge risk uh, for us in terms of uh, uh, animal performance and also feed formulation. I want to bring a warning right here and highlight the Vowes process is basically the most common process of zinc offered to the animal feed industry. And we must be aware of when that comes. Of course, other process can be uh, can bring uh, better results, but also can also have impact in quality and as well price. So this is a, a internal data conducted by um, uh, Trout Nutrition, also the PARC Institute. And right here, uh, as much as I've done in the, the previous research, as I show, also a chica method was used to generate a, a standard curve with zinc sulfate compared to the different source of zinc oxide. And right here, the idea was, of course, understand about the major, the most um, important suppliers of zinc, uh, of zinc oxide worldwide in the industry, how we could expect in terms of uh, relative bioavailability using the chick assay method. So in this case, about close to 20% of uh, zinc oxide sources were used. And we compare with uh, the, and then you create the zinc sulfate standard curve to make the relative bioavailability results. So, uh, I'm going to split in, in two tables, one to 10, and now another to 10 to 20 to make sure that can be visually easy to understand. But uh, when right here, you can see the relative bioavailability of zinc when compared to sulfate. And one thing I want to take uh, bring the attention right here to highlight is concentration of zinc can vary considerably among source. So not most or not all the zinc oxide you buy are 78%, but can vary even closer to 73 or even below 70 as I'm going to show further on. And also the concentration of zinc metal, which suppose when you want to buy zinc oxide, one of the high concentration of the zinc oxide. So most part of the zinc must be zinc oxide, but not zinc pure metal, which happens some of the source. So this is a contamination problem because this zinc metal is very poor in bioavailability. You don't want to offer this to the animals. Uh, uh, we don't want to offer this to the animals at the end of the day. So uh, this first thing I want to take attention, variation in concentration of zinc and variation in the concentration of the metal zinc. And when it comes to the relative variability, different process, different results. Of course, a very big range varying from close to 30% of relative variability when compared to sulfates, closer to 60%. So you cannot control different source can be in different products. And of course, we'll, uh, here we talk about the different products, uh, basic zinc fluoride, which offer basically the same result as you, as you can see in sulfate, because in this case, we're not talking about a zinc oxide sample. And then when it comes to the other treatments right here, we also can see a better result for relative variability in zinc, because that comes from a different process, like the French process, which is much higher, but most of the French process uh, is not being used for feed industry, but go more to analytical pharmaceutical industry which also impact the cost of this uh, production, also the cost of the end product, the zinc oxide. But as you can see, offer uh, also variation. So, and that comes to Vowers process again, below 6% of uh, uh, relative availability in zinc. And as you can see, also when it comes to the French process, the concentration of zinc is much higher when that comes to compare to the other uh, process in the case of Vowers process or hydrosulfides uh, process as well. So as a summarization here, just a summary, I want to bring like a zinc sulfate as a 100% of relative variability. But as we can see, Vowers process, there is a huge variability from 30 to 6%. And of course, other indirect process can bring a much higher relative variability, which is close to what happened to the sulfate. So just to give idea where can range the relative variability of zinc oxide when it comes to the type of source you want to work with. And just to mention some zinc metal residues where the bioavailability is supposed to be very low. And some of our samples that came from Bowers process were much close to this unavailable type of zinc metal source when they compared to the other average Bowers process source. You must be aware, and this can be a very big, can be very risky to nutrition formulation in the animal feed industry.
uh, right here, a different, a different research uh, I published in the Animal Food Science Technology Journal, uh, where they compare different sources of uh, uh, sulfate and oxide from, uh, 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 from feed and also food grade. And I, I, Anna will highlight a few things in this publication. And they, in this case, they are trying to estimate the relative availability of zinc uh, from this inorganic source for sheep. So there was a, in this case right here, we talk about the ruminants. So uh, in the relative, so one thing I want to bring is the solubility of the product. When that comes to zinc oxide, the solubility compared to sulfate is much lower. So actually, uh, compared to everything, any reagent grade they use, sulfate was much higher in solubility, as we know, because the sul uh, sulfate are very soluble, very reactive, much higher than base carbonate, which were higher than oxide, and also were higher than metals. And of course, only sulfate are completely soluble in water. But I want to bring attention right here, when it comes to 2% citric acid solution, and right here we talk about a, a pH that's very close to 2. So we have oxides which is solubility around 70 to 80%. So is not that so some part of these oxides are not being soluble so part of this zinc are not being available to absorption at the end of the day so we must be aware about this and that and also i'm going to show further some results in our than in our master lab which show the same variation in solubility which can affect the, uh, directly the amount of zinc uh, available to be absorbed by the animal in the future of course when it comes to a very low ph like a point 12 uh, hydrochloride, you're going to see close to 99%. So that's expected, but there is variation in low sol solubility when it comes to the citric acid uh, buffer. Uh, and compare here when it comes to reagent grade zinc source, of course, uh, in this case, the bioavailability was checked, the, uh, was checked on tissues and compare like it's pancreas, kidney, and liver. And when you compare sulfates and oxide, uh, oxide shows not much difference to sulfate. Remember, we are talking a very highly uh, good source of zinc oxide, which is called the analytical reagent grade source. This is not the source that we use for animal feed grade. And when coming to the animal feed grade, the result shows a little uh, a little bit difference when it comes to the tissue concentration or relative variability uh, for pancreas, kidney, and liver. And when you compare oxide A and B to sulfate, of course, you're going to see a variation from 99 to 80, 87 to 83, 79 to 74. So oxide to be very uh, present in le lesser relative variability when compared to sulfate. And also, even in this case, in this experiment, the variation was also higher. Uh, let's talk a little bit about stability. And uh, recently, a study has been done uh, in a uh, uh, in uh, our master lab in contribution to our trial nutrition Benelux team and I uh, and where they compare different source of zinc actually they compare zinc oxide from different suppliers and compare and in a different solubility pH solution in the case 2.0 I want to show right here for you when they compare to intelibon zinc and also pure zinc oxide in this case the pure zinc is the analytical way but what I want to bring that to you is to see how the variation of the zinc oxide can happen even in turn to the animal feed industry. So these are regular suppliers that are available in the market, not just for trial nutrition, but for any premix or feed company. So what we can expect in terms of stability or solubility of this zinc when it comes to those different suppliers in different process. Just to mention, those feed oxides came from different places like Turkey, Germany, India, and Mexico. Most of them could describe which are the process they originated, in this case, VAWES, but of course, some others could not even tell because that's a combination of process because they buy from different manufacturers. So uh, just a microscope picture to make sure you can see the process can affect directly the granulometry and also the color, the texture of the zinc, uh, the zinc oxide. When, right here, we have the IntelliBone where you can see the oxides available right here. Of course, this is a microscopic image of 5x, but you can see like a very homogeneous in, in the, the spheres of the, the, the zinc oxide, the, the, the intelligent zinc right here. But when it comes to the zinc oxide, different colors, different texture, different granulometry. Something that, of course, internally, and I believe any animal feed industry premix or feed company can control that as much as they can, as much as can control 
the analysis of the heavy metals, but something that can vary according to the to the any new purchase or any new product arrive in the warehouse and comes from different places and also offer different relative bioavailability. When it comes to this uh, variation stability, when you compare IntelliBond to the other four samples, that's what's happened to the solubility at pH 2.0. About 30 minutes in pH 2.0, some sample like sample 5 and 6, not even 30% of soluble zinc in pH 2, and of course some other sample close to 6, but they're going to take about two hours to have some samples over 90% of, of solubility. And that's what we are not looking for. In terms of passive rate, of course, that can vary a lot uh, among animals and category when you compare uh, broilers and, and growth finished pigs or also calves and lactating daddy cows or finishing steers and feedlots. But uh, two hours in pH 2.0 is not enough to, uh, it's too much time for us in a very low pH when we come to the true stomach of the animals. So in this point, I believe uh, when it comes to the zinc oxide, because this, of course they can offer less reactive and less solubility when compared to sulfate, but at the end of the day, we're going to have a big variation and not much zinc available to absorption. So they're going to impact as well the amount of zinc to be uh, used by the animal in the future for any for uh, any need that can be performance or even production or even some inflammatory process or other things. So reproduction and anything else. So I, be, I mu we must be aware that when taking the decision to use zinc oxide as a major source of zinc for, for livestock nutrition. So, and as alternative, I'm going to share a few, three nice results you have like a, recently we've been talking about, you have this webinar series showing the importance of, uh, to choose a better source of trace mineral. We've been talking about the use of the, our hydrox trace mineral source in Telebond and may, most of the results you have is when you benchmark for sulfates and that make a lot of sense because you understand as well the sulfate is much more high of bioavailable than the oxides but in this case i want to show as well that oxide uh, how we can compare intelibond when we comes to oxide as well in terms of performance so right here is a very interesting study done in 2018 in united kingdom about uh, 1080 male ross broilers where they were dividing three, uh, from zero to two, 35 days, they were divided, uh, they were allocating two treatments where they could receive uh, treatment one was 15 ppm of copper from sulfate and 80 ppm of zinc from zinc oxide. And treatment two, zinc, uh, at 15 ppm of copper from IntelliBond copper and 80 ppm of zinc from IntelliBond zinc. So in this experiment, of course, birds were weight, but uh, in the, on day 28, uh, some birds were selected to samples be taken from muscle for gene expression and also blood to plasma level for stress or response markers. Uh, as, a, as, we, as we can see here, when it comes to weight gain and feed, feed intake, broilers that receive a, a, a source of a IntelliBond compared to, uh, to, to an inorganic source of copper zinc could improve the feed intake and also the body weight gain. And when it comes to some oxidative stress market, even for uric acid level or uh, methyl maloninic acid, the, uh, this overall oxidative stress actor was reduced when it comes to the use of IntelliBond. And that would be expected because if you use a highly available, uh, higher bioavailable source of zinc, and in this case, why not to expect a higher body weight gain? Because you know how much zinc play an important role in the muscle development, but as well as a, a, how much zinc is part of a very important metalloenzyme and metalloproteins that will be very responsible to uh, to the to the to the balance of the oxidative stress in, in in livestock animals. In this case, you could be see this visual reduction right here. Uh, when the also another trial that was done with a uh, swine, we talk about 400 pigs, like a, a growth finisher swine, start to weight about uh, eight, eight, six to eight kilograms and weight about 124 kilograms. That was a study done in Canada. So, right here, uh, two treatments. One was zinc oxide treatment because they use a, a 125 ppm of copper from Telebond copper, but 125 ppm of zinc from zinc oxide. And, and the other treatment, the the zinc source was, in was replaced by IntelliBond uh, zinc. So in this case, you could observe when comparing zinc oxide to IntelliBond zinc, a higher 
uh, body final weight for the animal that receive for the pigs that receive the uh, IntelliBone zinc as a treatment. So about 1.7 kilograms of live weight. As I mentioned before, we all understand that zinc play an important role in the muscle development and growth. And more important than that, when it comes to the zinc oxide, we could reduce the variation of body weight of the piglets in the uh, in the group. So when and this variation was reduced about close to 20%. When you compare IntelliBone zinc to the zinc oxide, we really reduce the amount of pigs that come to the lightweight that goes to the more higher weight, as you can see here. So you have a much more less variation in the group, as much more homogeneous group of, uh, of pigs that can really affect the shipment management in, in the integrators or in the farm. So nice result as well when it comes to the use of a better, uh, higher bioavailable, more safety source of uh, zinc when compared to the zinc oxide as well. And to finalize our presentation, I go to this another result done in 2016 that comes more now talk about uh, layer hands. So uh, that was a trial done in Conduta in Texas A&M University using about 600 uh, layers, high line double 36. So two treatments, one receiving uh, 80 ppm of zinc and 60 ppm of manganese from oxide source and another 80 ppm of zinc and 60 ppm of, of manganese from IntelliBone source. And the parameters measured include egg production, feed conversion, shell thickness, and also shell strength. Uh, and uh, as you can see here, when that comes to use a more higher bioavailable, a better source of trace minerals when compared to oxide, we could so see uh, improved lay rate when it comes to IntelliBond compared to zinc to oxides, also a better FCR, and as well, a improved shell thickness when it comes to the IntelliBond compared to oxide. Nice result showing the opportunities to be work with a better source of trace mineral, more safe source. So uh, my last slide here, uh, some of the implications I want to bring to you all, uh, that uh, uh, different feed grade source of zinc oxide are variable in quality, appearance, which include color and texture, also solubility, zinc content, bioavailability, impurities, and also process methods. The distinct manufacturing process and sub-process make the zinc oxide results prediction even more complex. For, for a no reason, the zinc oxide originates from the plow waste process presents the higher variability and the lower bioavailability results compared to the other zinc, zinc oxide methods. Although all zinc oxide manufacturing process and sources also reflect light variation in outcome results. As a conclusion, change from supplier has a deep effect on quality and performance results when it comes to zinc oxide. And replacement of zinc oxide for IntelliBond is preferred in terms of uh, quality assurance as well as animal performance reason. IntelliBond zinc offers much more stability, safety, bioavailability, and performance results than zinc oxide and other inorganic sources of zinc. I thank you for your attention and, particip and to participate on this webinar. And I'll be, if you have some time, and I believe you do, I'll be glad to answer some questions.